Caribbean beaches are ankle deep in slimy, smelly seaweed. Wave after wave of sargassum is blanketing shorelines from Barbados to Cancun. It traps sea turtles, it smothers coral reefs, and it drives tourists away from islands that depend on them. This seaweed isn't just crashing weddings on the beach, it's crashing Caribbean economies. But what if sargassum wasn't just a mess, but a raw material? What if we could turn it into bricks, biogas, and even buttery soft t-shirts? What if the right refining is all it takes to transform this weed into biodegradable packaging and high-performance composites? This is the story of how Caribbean and international startups are transforming the seaweed invasion into a sustainable resource. And we all get the t-shirts. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by 8 Sleep. Hundreds of millions of tons of seaweed have washed up on the Caribbean and Mexican beaches since 2011. 2025 is already a banger year with 38 million tons arriving in May alone. And more is on the way for the summer. Caribbean communities are struggling to cope. Hotels have seen occupancy rates dip by 10%. That's because sargassum rots on the beach. It belches out fumes that smell like rotten eggs. It's bad enough to drive off tourists and even close schools. Tourism isn't the only thing that suffers. Thick mats of it clog the shallows. They sink and rot. They smother reefs and seagrasses. They kill fish. It's a state of emergency for nature and for communities. The U.S. Virgin Islands declared an actual state of emergency in 2022. The seaweed blocked the water intake for a desalination plant. So what even is this mess? Well, the mess is sargassum. It's a seaweed with tiny air-filled buoys up and down its stalk that help it stay afloat. This type of sargassum never anchors to the seafloor. It spends its entire life drifting on the surface. It multiplies just by breaking into pieces. Those pieces grow into new plants, kind of like how you chop up a starfish and end up with five new ones. It's the perfect setup for a runaway bloom. For years, this was okay. Sargassum stayed put in the Sargasso Sea. It's a vast stretch of Atlantic Ocean where looping currents permanently corral the seaweed. It's like a lazy river with no exit. Now, that all changed in 2010. A freak weather event pushed Sargassum out of the Sargasso Sea and into the Atlantic Ocean. Since then, it's been making an annual return to the Caribbean. Like a bad sequel with a bigger budget. Most of the seaweed hits the windward coasts of the Antilles Island Arc and Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. That's Cancun, known for its long white beaches. They now face heavy landings from March to October. Hotels scramble to clean it up, but the coasts are steep. Clearing just one kilometer of beachfront during sargassum season can run $70,000 a month. That's three-fifths of a mile. Disposal is another headache. What doesn't fit in the landfill ends up in unofficial dumping sites. But what if we started treating sargassum not as a waste to get rid of, but an opportunity to exploit? Not as a plague washing ashore, but a bumper crop. When life hands you seaweed, why not do like Senor Sargazzo and make, well, houses? In Mexico's Yucatan, Omar Vasquez has developed a way to turn sargassum into durable bricks. Each one is made with about 40% seaweed. A single home can lock away 20 tons of the weed. The very first one he built back in 2018 has already withstood five hurricanes. The bricks are durable. They're cheaper to make than traditional bricks, and residents of sargassum brick houses say they stay cool in the summer heat. Instead of houses, a team on the island of Grenada is making brownies. That's because rotting sargassum releases methane. It's the natural gas that fuels the ovens at True Blue Bay Resort's House of Chocolate Bakery. Benjamin Nostrovic founded Sargass in 2023. He feeds sargassum into a biodigester along with food waste and pig manure. Microbes break it all down and release the methane. He then captures it and sells it to the bakery. Sargass now has government approval for a much larger digester and a biogas-fueled generator. It could turn 5,000 to 8,000 tons of sargassum each year into about 150 kilowatts of power. That's roughly the output of 1,500 home solar panels at a typical capacity. Now, this setup also, of course, keeps running after sunset. It's only enough to meet a half percent of peak demand, but for a small island that imports diesel, that's a meaningful cut in both costs and emissions. It's a step towards energy independence. Now, sargassum releases methane no matter where it breaks down, on a beach, in a landfill, or in a digester. You might as well put that gas to good use. If I'm choosing, I'll take the solution that bakes my banana bread. Like all the solutions we'll talk about, this one can scale. It can process more seaweed and produce more energy over time. And speaking of optimizing energy production, 
There's another kind of energy optimization that's just as important, and that's optimizing your sleep for peak daily performance. That's where today's sponsor, 8sleep, comes in. I've actually been using 8sleep for years now, all the way back to their very first crowdfunded version. This newest generation is the Pod 5 Ultra. The Pod 5 is a high-tech cover that you add to any existing bed, packed with sensors and temperature control elements powered by AI. The newest generation introduces a blanket for the first time that extends temperature regulation across your entire body, not just the mattress surface. With the cover that I have, it's tracking my sleep stages, heart rate variability, respiratory rate, and more, all without wearing any devices. The pod uses precision temperature control to regulate your sleep cycles, cooling down to as low as 55 degrees Fahrenheit or warming all the way up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, with each side of the bed controlled independently. My wife and I each have our own ideal settings. The new Autopilot Health Check gives you deeper visibility into health trends like abnormal heartbeats and breathing patterns. This isn't just about comfort. It's clinically proven to give you up to one hour more quality sleep each night. I've seen a massive improvement in how I sleep with the temperature regulation alone, and really miss it when I'm traveling. Head over to 8sleep.com slash Matt Farrell and use the code Matt to get up to $350 off your Pod 5 Ultra. You get 30 days to try it in your home, but trust me, your body will thank you for this investment in better sleep. Thanks to 8sleep and to all of you for supporting the channel. Now back to turning the Caribbean problems into innovative solution. That's the idea behind rum and sargassum. It's a startup that grew out of Professor Legina Henry's lab at the University of West Indies on the island of Barbados. Her team fermented sargassum using wastewater from local rum distilleries and manure from the island's black belly sheep. And with the methane they produced, they powered a car. They say a $2,500 four-hour retrofit is all it takes to convert a gasoline engine to run on biomethane. The goal is now to build a commercial operation to fuel the island's cars and taxis with biogas made from seaweed and rum. As long as it's the car that's drinking and not the driver, I might just be on board. But burning sargassum isn't the only way to get rid of it. You can also slather it on her faces. Just hear me out. Instead of fermenting sargassum for its energy, we can refine it to extract high-value materials like alginate, fucoidin, nanocellulose, and other multi-syllable words worth multi-millions. Take alginate and fucoidin. They're natural thickeners and moisturizers that the company Origin by Ocean extracts from sargassum. Founder Mary Granstrom ships seaweed from the Caribbean to her biorefinery in Finland. Those shipping costs are worth it. Alginate and fucoidin are used in products far more expensive per kilo than biogas. Cosmetics. There's a certain irony in running screaming from the stuff on the beach, <laughs> only to end up slathering it on your sunburned shoulders. Origin by Ocean has also teamed up with Danish homeware brand Merimekko. They use the Caribbean alginate to thicken the dye pastes behind their signature colorful fabric prints. But wait, there's more. Sargassum doesn't just help print on fabric, it can also be fabric. Entrepreneur Johanna Dijon from St. Lucia has spun out a company called Alt Fiber. He extracts natural fibers from sargassum, banana stems, and pineapple leaves. That means turning beach seaweed and agricultural waste into paper products and food packaging that resists grease and water. These fibers could even be spun into lightweight wearable cloth. Dijon is now working with Georgia Tech and the University of Maine to fine-tune his extraction process. When it's ready, Alt Fiber will be rescuing trees from paper mills. Will also be diverting sargassum from landfills. And Alt Fiber isn't the only one seeing fabric potential in seaweed. Keel Labs is weaving soft cloth from a seaweed based fiber now featured in Outer Known's line of blanket shirts. And a number of companies are fermenting seaweeds into bioplastics similar to corn based plastics, but without hogging farmland, freshwater, or fertilizer. Lollyware has created a seaweed based single use straw, and Sway is swaying fashion brands towards compostable garment bags made from kelp. If you want to dive in deeper into how seaweed could replace plastic, I've got a whole episode on that. Now, the tide of innovation is still coming in. Florida gets its own very unwanted share of sargassum washing ashore. Now, an Orlando company called Source wants to make it a happier place, if not the happiest place on Earth. They're turning all that weed into high-performance nanocellulose. Yep, it's another one of those million-dollar words. Nanocellulose is a naturally occurring fiber found in plants and seaweeds. It's incredibly lightweight and it's as strong as steel for its weight. Like glass or carbon fiber, it can reinforce resins. You can mix it in to boost strength, or you can use it as a nanoscale coating. Source sees potential for its seaweed-based version in everything from car doors and airplane panels to boat hulls and bike frames. Basically, anywhere lightweight strength really matters. Source extracts these fibers from sargassum using a custom solvent made from fruits and vegetables. 
They then shear them down to just 100 to 500 nanometers long and 50 nanometers wide. That's over a thousand times thinner than a human hair. The company tweaks the chemistry to create two C-bind additives. One is uncharged for strengthening composites and coatings, and one is negatively charged for using in sticky stuff like adhesives and paints. Founders Derek Salzman and Mason Mincy recently put their seaweed-based additive to the test. They partnered with Oak Ridge National Laboratory and the University of Tennessee. They used industrial-scale equipment to reinforce carbon fibers with a thin coating of their seaweed-based nanocellulose. Lighter, stronger materials made from a weed that's choking Caribbean beaches. This is disaster opportunism, but in the very best way. Sargassum is actually a better starter material than wood for a lot of applications. It doesn't contain much lignin, and that's the woody part of wood that's tough to break down. Even so, it's got its own sugar-based polymers that can clog the works. It's got a slimy little secret. Sargassum often absorbs arsenic and other heavy metals from the environment. These have to be stripped out for safe use. This is already being done, but there's still plenty of room to improve how sargassum is broken down, and to expand what we can make from it. To accelerate the science, Schmidt Sciences and Foundation for Food and Agricultural Research have pledged up to $47 million over five years. This goes to researchers from eight academic institutions plus an industry partner. At Princeton and Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, researchers are analyzing the compounds naturally produced when sargassum is fermented, and then reprogramming microbes to make even more valuable ones. Scientists at the University of Puerto Rico are hunting for the microbes that make the most methane-rich biogas from sargassum. And at UCLA, professors Aaron Moment and Alyssa Park are cooking up hydrogen fuel from sargassum's complex sugars. They've got quite the recipe. Just heat sargassum to 500 degrees Celsius or 932 degrees Fahrenheit with sodium hydroxide, also known as lye, add nitrogen gas and a nickel catalyst, and the result is 90% pure hydrogen gas plus a side of sodium carbonate. The UCLA team is also working on ways to extract metals from sargassum. The goal isn't just to clean out the arsenic, it's to explore whether sargassum could be a source of critical metals for batteries and electronics. To recover metals bound in sargassum, scientists are testing molten salt electrolysis. It's the same technique used to release aluminum from its ore. They're also exploring whether the sodium carbonate byproduct from hydrogen production can be transformed into carbon nanotubes using the same electrolysis process. That's hydrogen fuel, potential battery minerals, and even carbon nanotubes, all from seaweed and all from a pesky biomass washing ashore, not from drilling or mining. It's all thanks to a wave of creative entrepreneurs and scientists. They're testing smart, potentially scalable ways to tackle the Caribbean's seaweed crisis. But this isn't the first time that seaweed has been tapped as a sustainable material. The blooms of sargassum washing up on Caribbean beaches each year might be a disaster, but they're also raw material for innovation. But what do you think? Would you retrofit your car to run on seaweed gas? Jump in the comments and let me know. And over on Patreon, I dive into the strange weather event that kicked off this whole seaweed invasion in 2009. If you'd like to join, the link's in the description. And be sure to listen to my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, while I'll keep this conversation going. Keep your mind open, stay curious, I'll see you in the next one.